So my friends over at GTR Lighting have been telling me that the new GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulbs are the brightest thing on the market. They're telling me they are brighter than the SV4 bulbs and they're telling me that they're brighter than the SL1 diode dynamics bulbs, especially in the 09 to 18 RAM. Now normally that's something that I would just test on my own and I'd come here on camera to you guys and say, hey, yay or nay, these are great, these are terrible, whatever. But we decided to do this a little differently. In this video, I'm gonna actually install the SV4 I'm going to install the Diode Dynamics SL1s, and finally, I'm going to install these new GTR lighting bulbs, and I'm going to let you guys decide what bulbs you want in your truck. We'll see if these are as bright as those guys are telling me. So, let's get the truck apart, let's get started. Now the first thing you should do before you even pick up a single tool is you should grab some painter's tape and tape off the fender and the bumper like I've done here. That'll prevent you from any silly mistakes like scratching the bumper while you're trying to upgrade your headlights. And on a black truck like this one, trust me, you're going to see anything that I do wrong. So with that being said, go ahead and grab a flat pry tool and we're just going to take this plastic piece off here to expose the fasteners holding the grill in place. So starting from the right. Go ahead and get under it like so, and just pry it up. There's a handful of these across the top. And if you'll notice, I'm actually prying underneath this rather than pulling the fastener through it. If you do it like that, all the fasteners stay in this piece and it makes reinstalling it super easy. All right, with all those removed, go ahead and lift this piece up, set it off to the side. So we've got four bolts across the top of this grill now that we need to remove. They're 10 millimeter bolts. You can use a ratchet, you can use an impact or a drill if you've got one. Starting with this one here on the far right. Now one thing I wanna point out real quick, there are two different thread pitches here. The one on my right hand here is threading into plastic and that's the outer bolts. The one on my left hand here is a metal thread. It's threading into the center two holes here that go into the radiator support. Don't mix those up. If you try to put one in the wrong hole, it's either going to strip the hole out or it's not gonna go in at all. Now, at this point, you're gonna feel the grill loosen up. You can go ahead, this part, especially if your truck's never been taken apart before, this, this part can be a little uh, worrisome. Trust me, they don't break. I've, I've pulled 50 of them off at least. And there's nothing to it other than grabbing under these crossbars here, pulling it toward you away from the truck. All right, now there's a tricky little spot in the wheel liner that we need to access. There's a little lever that needs to get pulled down. It's not a big deal and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Now we've just got a couple bolts left and we'll be able to pull these headlights out. Now there's a little plastic retainer in here. It looks just like this. And if you use that same pry tool we were using earlier, you can pop it out of there and it will expose this trap door here. It's so tricky to capture on camera, but basically if you reach in here, you're gonna feel a little plastic lever and you need to push up on it. If you push up on it, you'll hear it click and it will allow you to remove the headlight from the truck. It's tough to show on, on video, but trust me, it's there and that's how it works. So there are two bolts remaining before we can pull this headlight out of the truck. There's this top one right here. They're both 10 millimeters and then there's this bottom one right here. Go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket Set that off to the side. Now at this point, we can go ahead and pull the headlight out of the truck. And the easiest way to do that is to just take it, bring it outward this way and toward you at the same time, and it'll release from the bracket in the rear. Pops out just like that. Now some of these, I don't know why this one went so well, some of these put up a real big fight Trust me, if you've followed my instructions so far, there's nothing else holding the headlight in. It will come out. Go ahead and give it a little extra love if you have to. Now at this point, we've got one connector on the bottom here. Go ahead and press in on it. Remove it just like so. Now we can take our headlight over to the bench. 
So the first thing you need to do when you've got your headlight pulled out of the truck like I've got this one here, is unbolt this dust cover on the back. And you can do that with an eight millimeter socket. Pop that off, and now you're gonna see your factory halogen bulbs. Go ahead and twist your low beam counterclockwise, pop it out just like so. Unclip it, we won't be needing this anymore. Do the same with the 9005 high beam. Now this shootout really didn't include the high beam, but I'm gonna show you guys how there's only really one option for the high beam on these particular vehicles. The way the high beams recessed up and to the right of the opening back here prevents just about every single bulb on the market from fitting properly. Anything fan cooled, anything passively cooled with a large heat sink just doesn't work. You can't get it in there. If you can get it in there, uh, you certainly can't get it to twist into the slot and fit properly. The GTR Lighting CSP Mini is one of the only bulbs you can run on the high beam of this that isn't an HID kit. Problem with HID kit, as we all know, is they've got a warm up period to hit the high beam. It blinks and it kind of warms up and by the time you actually get to use it there's somebody coming around the corner and you got to shut your high beams off. This LED bulb doesn't have that problem. Instantly full bright, it fits, it works great. So this is a little more involved than just a basic bulb swap. We've got our original bulbs out and now it's time to install the new good stuff. But first, there's a couple things I need to give you a heads up on. We're going to take our new GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulbs and we're going to go ahead and install that just like so. Twist it in place. As you can see, the bulb fits just fine. Now there's a couple things we need to take care of. These Ram trucks are extremely picky vehicles, and if you buy this kit from us, you're gonna notice in the kit includes pass-through harnesses, PWM modules, and we do have these optional dust covers. What you'll notice with these dust covers is they are pre-drilled, and they also include a little bit larger rear cavity here that allows the heat sink of the bulb to still fit in the headlight, still get a dust cover back on without any issues. What you'll find with the original dust cover is it's just a little bit slimmer and on some vehicles the heat sink can bump into it and it won't fit properly. This will be pushing on the back of the bulb, it's the last thing you want. Now the cool part about these covers that we have on our website is if you don't have a Unibit this size, the Unibit at a hardware store is like 40 bucks and I think the covers aren't much more than that. So if you're going to buy a Unibit that you'll never use ever again, you might as well just buy this cover and be done with it. And it's so much easier to just take this grommet off in your garage, slap it into the new cover like so, and just bolt it back in. It's so much easier to do it that way. Trust me, I wish that they had these all along. I've been working on Rams for years. These just came out, I love them. Now, when you're all done getting that grommet installed, it should look exactly like this. As you can see, it's still gonna seal just as good as the factory did, but we've got a few holes in the back now and a little bit larger rear cavity. Now, let's go ahead and install our pass-through harness into this cover. Go ahead and feed these through just like so. Should look just like that when you're done with it. Go ahead and do the same for the low beam. Now with that grommet installed in the dust cover, go ahead and install your GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb. We'll twist into place counterclockwise. Locks in just like so. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. So pay close attention to this part. We're gonna take our GTR Lighting bulb and we're gonna line up the positive and negative marks on it with the red and black wires. Plug it in like so. Take this connector and plug in your factory wiring. Blue goes to red, just like that. Now, our low beam is taken care of. On this end of the low beam, we've got this pass-through harness, and that's where we're gonna install our GTR Lighting PWM module, making sure to line up the positive and negative tabs. Plug the other end in, just like this. Now at this point, it's really easy to make a mistake plugging these in and get a positive going to negative. If that happens, nothing bad's gonna happen to your truck. Your light just won't turn on. So if you get all of this install done, you gotta power it up and you've got one side working, the other side isn't, go ahead and just flip one of these connectors, you know, reinspect your wiring, make sure that you've got everything plugged in the right way, red to red, black to black. It is time to install our GTR Lighting CSP Mini High Beam. And the coolest part about this is you can connect it directly to the pass-through harness like so. As you'll see, this bulb has got little markings on it that say positive. Make sure your red wire goes to the positive. Go ahead and install it. We're going to twist it clockwise to lock it in place. At this point, you're going to see why it's one of the only bulbs that fits. It's 
up and to the right in such a way that it's even kind of tough to get it in there by itself. So at this point, we can go ahead and tuck all of this back into the headlight. And you'll see why we use those pass-through harnesses. You can technically fit the PWM modules in the headlight. I've done it before. Honestly, it turns into a mess and it doesn't, it just doesn't work out as well. So using these pass-through harnesses, it's an added step, but honestly, instead of having them tucked into the headlight, you've now got them outside. You can zip tie them. And that's really slick. Now, as you'll see, these grommets popped out on me while I was installing this. It's not a big deal. Uh, I can reinstall them from the outside no problem uh, so let's go ahead and get these screws reinstalled here honestly it's the exact opposite of the removal they fit right back in this cover looks like it was honestly made by the same factory that makes the uh, Chrysler covers that come on these headlights nothing to it so I'm gonna snug this up now before I get too crazy buttoning this thing up as you'll see, I've just got it kind of mocked up here. The next step, I'm gonna take this thing over to the truck. As you saw, there's a ton of connections we made here. There's a chance I got something wrong, and I've done this many times. So I invite you to go ahead and take this thing, reinstall it in the truck, plug it in, power the headlights up, low beam, high beam, make sure everything works properly before you get it completely buttoned up. That way, if you did get a connector backwards, you don't have to fight through taking the whole thing apart again. So we've got the cover installed now. As you can see, everything fits just fine. We've got our PWM modules coming out the back. Now these, just for clarification purposes, these are perfectly sealed. You can zip tie them just about anywhere back there once you're all done with your install. Uh, one zip tie just like this through both eyelets, uh, around some of the chassis, around some wire harness, whatever you wanna do, perfectly fine. These things are stout, they can hang anywhere. So this is what our stock beam pattern looks like against the wall with an H11 halogen bulb installed. Now, the cool part about the Ram projector lights is they've got a really nice beam pattern from the factory. And honestly, LED bulbs don't typically improve a beam pattern necessarily. So if you're already starting with a good beam pattern and we can just brighten it up with a good bulb, that is exactly what we're trying to do here. Now, this came in at 340 lux. As I explained in the intro, lux is the most usable form of measurement when it comes to figuring out how bright a headlight is. 340 lux, pretty good. We've got an identifiable hotspot left and right. Let's see what we can do with an LED bulb. This is what the SL1 bulb from Diode Dynamics looks like installed in our RAM projector headlight. Now, the stock low beam lux measurement was 340 lux. The Diode Dynamics bulb came in at 370 and we're about 20 feet from the wall. That's not a drastic improvement, but as you can see, it is pretty clean output left to right. We've still got our hot spots. We picked up 30 lux. Like I said, it's not a crazy improvement. Now this is what it looks like with the SV4 bulb installed. As you can see, we've still got our left and right hotspots. This one's significantly brighter in stock, however. This came in at 550 lux. Once again, compared to the stock lux measurement of 340, that's a pretty good improvement. Now this is what the GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb looked like in our RAM projector headlight, and this one actually won this shootout. This one came in at 660 maximum lux. The stock low beam lux was 340. That is a significant upgrade. So you can see we've still got our hot spots left to right. With all of these LED bulbs, as you're about to see when I stack all of these on top of each other, you can see on the passenger side, it darkens up to the right of the hot spot, and actually the stock bulb did too. Uh, we're not sure why these headlights do that seems to be a common trait amongst all the bulbs we tested, and it just is what it is. However, with our hotspots being so much brighter than stock, we're now gonna reach so much further down the road. If you're looking for the best option for your RAM, in this case, it looks like the GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb is your choice. Now, if you're taking your truck apart, you're probably gonna to wanna to do high beam as well. This is what the stock high beam looks like, and it came in at 420 maximum lux. It's not a crazy bright high beam from the factory. As you can see, we pick up a little light above the cutoff line, nothing crazy. Let's see what that GTR Lighting CSP Mini bulb can do. Now, the GTR Lighting CSP Mini high beam came in at 700 lux. Compared to the 420 stock maximum lux, that's a pretty good high beam option. As you see, we've got a little bit of a streaky beam pattern. To be fair, just about every LED bulb that does fit this high beam performs very similarly. And in this case, it just is what it is. I have noticed that with HID kits, it's not quite as streaky, but like I said earlier in the video, with an HID kit, you've got that warm up period. By the time you can use the high beam, it's already too late. You've already got traffic coming. So if you're looking for the best LED option for high beam, this is it. Now, as it turns out, my friends over at GTR Lighting were not wrong. These are some of the brightest LED headlight bulbs we've ever had on this channel. And actually, we've got them on the schedule quite a bit for future videos. Now, 
We're also going to be doing a video on installing those same bulbs in the fog light of this truck. So if you're getting the low beams and the high beams from us, definitely check that out. They are some of the brightest bulbs on the market, like I just said, and they're going to be insane in the fog lights. I can't wait to dig into that next. Now, we've been working on these 09 to 18 Rams for years now. We've had some of the first bulbs on the market that actually worked with the CAN bus systems on these things. We had some of the first working cargo lights, first working reverse lights that didn't throw any errors on the dash. It's the last thing you want on a brand new truck is a little warning light, right? So if you guys need anything else for your Ram trucks, by all means, click subscribe, visit headlightrevolution.com. We'd love to help you out.